Hey guys, Fixall here. Um, today we'll be doing a tutorial on how to clean out all the passages and how to polish or clean all the bearing um, journals on a crankshaft. But before we get into that, I'm going to do a, just a quick little minute, minute and a half long update on the car. <laughs> um, what I've done to the car since you saw it last is... I've blacked out the tack, the voltage gauge, and oil pressure gauges, which are over there, and the coolant temperature gauge over there. I still have the factory fuel gauge and the factory speedometer. Um, basically, I did that because I'm going to have an aftermarket tachometer that's going to be mounted kind of right in here, and then I'm going to have aftermarket uh, coolant temp voltage and oil pressure gauges just analog gauges on on the pillar here auto meter makes a pillar gauge pod and then i'm also going to have an afr gauge on auto meter makes a, a gauge pod that sticks up right here but so that's all that's been done to the car um however i did order some parts for the engine which as you can see is not here right now so the engine's actually at the machine shop, along with the cylinder heads. Yes, I know I said I was going to do a valve lapping video on my cylinder heads, but I decided oh, I'll just let the machine shop do it. That way I know that the valves will seal good. Anyways, I've also ordered a bunch of parts. I have my Comp Cams XE282HR12 camshaft. Those are the specs. 282, 290 duration, and 565, 574 lift. And then we got our ProComp pedestal mount roller rockers, which there's mixed reviews about those on Summit Racing. I'm going to try them. Most of the reviews say that they're noisy, but my car is going to be noisy anyways with this cam which is going to make it chop and of course we've got our push rod length checker to make sure that our push rod lengths are correct i think i'll be able to use the stock push rods because i'm using like the stock lifters this will probably have the stock uh, like same base circle as the factory cam right there um but just to be sure and then i also got a second set of lifters these aren't the ones i'm going to be using the ones i'm going to be using are these these are actually out of the motor um, but I'm going to turn one of these into a solid lifter to check piston to valve clearance which is something you should always do when putting an aftermarket camshaft or cylinder heads on an engine and then we got finishing off our, our uh, valve train we have our Cloy's true roller timing chain set and then we also have or I also have um the associated valve springs, retainers, and locks for these, which are currently at the machine shop because they are installing the valve springs on the cylinder heads for me because they are dual valve springs, so uh, the seat where the valve spring sits in the head actually has to be machined a little bit. Um, and then moving on from there, we have our gaskets, uh, Felpro Permadry um, valve cover gaskets because I don't like cork gaskets. I also have a one-piece oil pan gasket that's in the bigger box underneath, along with head gaskets and everything from Felpro. And then we have a Summit Racing harmonic balancer. And then we have all our sealed power um, connecting rod bearings, main bearings, and piston rings. And then I also had a set of sealed power, um, what's it called, camshaft bearings that again are with the machine shop because they are installing them in the block for me. And then I also had a set of frost plugs that the machine shop is going to install for me. The machine shop is also um, hot tanking both the block and the heads for me. And then, so that's pretty much everything I ordered. That's quick. the quick update. Let's get straight into the video now. So the video we have here is Sorry. polishing the crankshaft and cleaning it a little bit. I have everything you need laid on the table here. First off, you will need a shoelace, or I have hockey skate laces here, because you want laces that are flat, so that the load is spread out evenly versus the ones that are round. If they're round, the load is kind of focused on that round part instead of being put out over flat, which gets you a better sand. And then you have 
you need scissors to cut your sandpaper. I have 400, 600, and 800, and you'll see in the video I actually only end up using the 600 and 800 because my crankshaft wasn't actually that bad, or as bad as I thought it was, so I didn't need the 400, so eat. Um, so if your crankshaft isn't that bad, or even if it's still really good and you just kind of want to clean it up, you could just use 800, but I would suggest doing, if it has a few score marks here and there, I would suggest doing 600 and then 800. And then of course we have our assortment of pipe cleaners to clean out the ports that go through this around here. Ooh, don't fall. The ports that go through the crankshaft. So what these ports do is they the oil goes from the main bearings through those ports to the rod bearings. And that's how the rod bearings get oil. And then we also have an assortment of rags because you'll need that to wipe the WD-40 off. And then of course our WD-40. Anyways guys, let's get straight into the video. So basically, I'm taking, this is 600 grit sandpaper. Uh, I was going to use 400, but I determined that my crank wasn't bad enough to actually need to use 400. They're cleaning up pretty well, which is 600. I've already done the front four mains, and I still have to do the fifth one, the very back one. And then I still have to do all the rod journals as well. So I'm going to walk through this last um, main journal about how to do it. And uh, what I do first is take WD-40, just kind of spray a little on the journal, give it a quick wipe down just to clean it up, make sure there's no debris or anything on it. Just so I can give you guys a quick... So... You can see before, a few little like score marks, scratch marks. And then these, this one I've done already. Same with that one. You see they clean up pretty well. This one has a, a kind of a bad score on it that I won't be able to get out, but oh well. So, what you do is you take your sandpaper, spray the journal, Put the sandpaper, put the sandpaper on there, grab your string, or lace I guess, kind of lay it over, and wrap it around, just like that. Now you don't want to do it too tight or else the sandpaper won't spin, so you kind of just have to loosely and then just go, make sure sandpaper stays centered, and then just go back and forth. You kind of want to pull them at an angle like this, or the other way, it doesn't really matter, so that you get right to the edges. Um, try to cut your sandpaper as close to, but a little narrower than the bearing journal itself. Because if you fit it like to the journal where it's the exact size width as the journal, it'll just hit, the, the, the sandpaper will just hit the sides and you won't be able to spin it because it'll just stick. So you need it to be a little narrow and then you just kind of work it, the sandpaper back and forth to get to the edges. And let's do this for a while. Make sure your sandpaper actually stays. On the journal, just like that. Sandpaper doesn't want to stay on the journal. There we go. Okay, and now we will. Then take your rig, wipe the excess WD-40 off. And all you're doing is, you're not going to take a whole lot of material. If you just want to take just enough 
so that it cleans up the journal and takes a few of the scars out. I'll give you an after. And you can see how much better that looks. So that's all I'm doing, just kind of sanding it just to clean it up. If I really wanted to, I could actually try to get like all the scar or score marks and everything off of it, out of it. But it's really only the second, pardon me, the second one that has a kind of bad scar in it. But like my finger doesn't even catch on it anymore. It, my finger would catch on it before, before I sanded it, but now after I sanded it, it doesn't catch anymore. So it's even like, like I've only done probably 20 seconds worth of sanding on each journal and it's cleaned it up good enough for what I'm doing. I don't want to take too much material off cause I don't want bearing, my bearing clearances to be like super loose. Um, but yeah, so that's my main journal, my main journal's done. Now I'm going to try and orientate it so I can get the raw journals pretty good. I'm going to do this, the rear raw journal, so this will be cylinders 4 and 8 on the old 351 Windsor. Same thing, WD-40, give it a nice spray. Now these will be easier because it's a smaller journal, smaller diameter. And it's wider. Give it a nice good wipe off. See these ones aren't, the raw journals on this crank are actually pretty good. It was just the mains that are in rough shape. I'm gonna grab my 600 grit sandpaper. Now like I said they're wider so I'm, I can't use the same one that I was using on the mains. And scissors and I'm basically just gonna hold this up put my scissors here and if I just kind of do that so you see this is like cut like perfectly to the journal and you can see it like doesn't spin because it hits the side of the journal. So now what I'm going to do is take scissors again and I'm just going to trim like like a millimeter, not even, off of the edge of this. All that's going to do is give me clearance side to side so it's not perfect so it will actually spin nice. So, same as the main journals, do a spray, sandpaper spray, and we will wrap this around, grab a string, or shoelace, skate lace, whatever you want to call it. Wrap it around and then it's repeat the process. Sometimes the sandpaper will still get stuck, and in that case, you just kind of have to adjust it a bit and it should free up. Sandpaper starts to come off. Usually, if it gets stuck, it's because you have the lace too tight around the journal. So, if you loosen up the lace a little bit on the journal, it usually frees up the sandpaper. Just like that. Again, just like 20 seconds or so, a little bit more. Okay, let's check that out. I'm going to grab the new 
new right here. Nice new rig. See how much better that looks compared to that one you don't have. It takes all the varnish lines off, it takes some of the light scoring out, and it just looks real good. I'm probably going to go over the whole crankshaft with 800 grits as well. It'll give it that much better of a finish. But basically I'm going to go ahead and do the other three rod journals, and I'll be back once I'm done that to go over it with 800. I'm finished with my 600 grit sandpaper. You can see here, no more varnish on any of the journals. And look at how good they all look with just 20 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds each sanding on each of them with 600 grit. So now, here we go. Now we have 800 grit. Same thing. Gotta be my piece of 800. And I like to size it up with not the front journal because there's only one side on the front journal. So we'll do something like probably the main, the middle one would be best. Where did my six go? There. And again, I'm just gonna kind of hold it there. Trim it a wee bit. Like so. Perfect. Alrighty, so same thing as before. W40, W40. Wrap it around, Just like so, and sand away. So I don't like doing the front one because the sandpaper always falls off because there's only there's nothing to hold it from falling off the front. You kind of have to go slow. Oh, fuck. As I was saying, you kind of have to go slow with the front one, or else it'll just, time period will just fall off the front. I mean, even going slow, it just works its way off eventually, too. Front bearings, front main sucks to do, but it's all right. We get through it. Okay, I'm going to go through and do the rest of the mains and I'll come back when I'm ready to do the rods. Alright, so I actually went ahead and did all the mains and the rod bearing or rod journals with 800. 
because it's literally the same process. See, this is my rod journal paper and then my main papers here. Anyways, you can see how good this looks. This is how you see that scar there, but my finger, I guess every once in a while it still catches on it, but nowhere near as bad as it used to be. And I actually did sand where the rear main seal rides just a little bit, like literally ch -ch -ch, that's about it. Just to kind of clear there's a little bit of rust on the lip here, just to clean that up a bit. But, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another rag, a clean rag, drink. And I'm just going to kind of go over the whole crankshaft, wipe everything down. In fact, I'm even going to stand it up, stay, and just kind of give every journal a good wipe and get all the excess like WD-40 off of it. Ouch. Just kind of get everything good. Wipe. Get all the excess WD-40. All the excess material that you removed off. Make sure you wipe the thrust bearing surfaces. Now, if you looked at my other videos, you know that this crankshaft's out of a 351. But... This process will work for a crankshaft out of like anything. Now this is a cast iron crankshaft because it's just the factory stock crankshaft. Um, I don't know if this process can be done on like uh, forge crankshafts, but if you have a forge crankshaft, odds are it's an aftermarket piece anyways, and you have the money to just get a machine shop to do this. Because <laughs> then it'll come out a lot better. And yes, this isn't going to get you a perfect finish. It's not going to be perfect. If you want perfect, take it to a machine shop. This is cheap DIY. Get it on the road. That's all this is. Get this back down. Right and here. Now, also what I'm going to do is all these oil galleries or oil ports in here. These ports, like this one, will go down to this main and vice versa. This one will go over to this main. Or sorry, this one will go there. This yeah. They'll go they'll go to the main somewhere. Just grab WD forty and you see it goes through there. Send WD forty in there, scrub with pipe cleaner a few times just to clean all the oil galleries out. And then give it another good wipe down and you're good to go. Got some, they're meant for cleaning straws from the dollar store. Basically all I'm going to do is take my WD-40, spray my brush a little bit. I'm also going to spray it in the hole. And take the brush and just kind of work it through it a little bit to just clean all the old oil and debris and everything out of there. This one. Same thing. Just Then I'll take my WD-40 again, just kind of spray this 
spray through it just to kind of flush it all out. Anyways, if you had an air compressor, I would highly suggest going through and blowing all the the WD-40 and debris out of the ports. I don't, so I'm just going to kind of use a brush and get what I can out. Got another new rig, and just like before, just kind of wipe all the excess and all the dirt that you pulled out of those passages. And you can see into the passages a little bit and they all look nice and clean now. Which is exactly what we want. Now what's nice about using WD-40 is even though you have wiped this all off, there's still going to be a film of WD-40 left over on all these bearings and inside all the journals or inside all the ports that we just cleaned out which is good because it'll keep this from rusting until I actually put assembly lube on it and put it in the in the block but so that's that's good but anyways that's pretty much it but yeah there's our polished <laughs> with quotations polished crankshaft and polished and cleaned crankshaft ready to go into the block once it gets back from the machine shop i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up it always helps and consider subscribing yeah i hope everybody has a great day